Hi everybody, welcome everyone back to Loon Dev's YouTube channel. In previous times, I once created a project that handles adding products to the shopping cart. A project that creates a product detail page. Many people have been interested and suggested combining these two projects into one. And that's the reason for this video. At the home page, when the user clicks on add to cart, the number of products in the shopping cart will immediately be increased. Click on this icon. A window listing products in the shopping cart will appear and fill the web content to the left. We can add or remove the number of products in the shopping cart right here. Opposite. When the user clicks on the product instead of the add product to cart button, the user will be navigated to the product detail page. Here the detailed information of that product is displayed. And here, people can add this product to the cart when clicking on the Add to Cart button. Below will be a list of similar products, with unified design for list style. And of course, these Add Products to Cart buttons will also work well. All data about this shopping cart will be saved in memory, even when the user turns off the computer or closes the browser. When they visit the website again, their shopping cart data will still exist. Finally, this design optimally displays on all browsers, all devices with different screen sizes. Like iPad and mobile. If you like good videos, don't forget to click like and subscribe to the channel to watch new videos every day. Before continuing with the code. Let's analyze the design together so we can write clearer code. This is the design on the home page and product detail page. Both of these pages have the same layout, includes header and a shopping cart window. So obviously we don't need to write it twice. I will create a template file to contain commonly used content. When accessing the index page, I just need to write the right content for that page. Then I'll move that content into the center of the template file and then it will have a complete product listing page. Likewise, with the details page, I just need to create the product details section. Then we will move this content to the center of the template file. So we will have a complete design. This way we will not need to rewrite the same content many times. And this design will also be easy to expand when you want to create more pages for your website. Proceed with coding. First I created a template file for general use on the pages. Style file to write CSS and cart.js to handle shopping cart related issues. At template, I will call the CSS and cart.js files here to use. Now, let's proceed with the code to create a frame for general use. It will consist of two main elements. Container is the place where all website data is stored. Cart tab is where information about the shopping cart is stored. The first component in the container is the website header. In the header there will be a title containing a path to navigate users to the home page and a shopping cart icon. To find the vector image of the cart icon I will visit this website. Search for icon cart. Then click it to copy the SVG code and paste it into your website. So I have a shopping cart icon. Below the icon there will be a span tag used to display the number of products in the cart. Default is zero. Below the header there will be an ID named content tab. This is where we insert detailed content for each page. Next is the content of cart tab. We have one title. The list cart class will be the place to contain the list of products in the shopping cart. And finally there are two buttons, close and checkout. And that's all the HTML content for the template file. We continue with CSS to complete its design. First, code the CSS first for valuable elements throughout the page. The first is the body, which is the element that contains the entire website content. Margin. Zero and use font family, poppins. SVG icons on the default website will be 30 pixels in size. What about link tags? Use text decoration. None to remove lines under text. And we'll use dark colors. Buttons on the website. Use cursor. Pointer to create a hand-shaped effect when the user hovers over the element.
in header. Use display. Flex to move child elements inside. With the title, make the font size very large. Next will be Cart tab. The window displays shopping cart information. Gives a dark background color that really stands out. White color. The default size when accessing by laptop or iPad is 400 pixels. For mobile, it is 100% width of that screen. Use position. Fixed to position it according to the browser window. At this point, I set the distance from the top right, and bottom margins of the browser window to 0 pixels. Display. Grid to divide rows for inner elements. Divide into 3 rows. The header row and the row containing the buttons have a height of 70 pixels. The rest will be devoted to the list cart class, which displays the list of products in the cart. With h1 title tag. For padding. 20 pixels. Margin. 0. Font weight. 300. With class btn contains 2 buttons. Use display. Grid to divide columns. And I will divide the two buttons inside into two columns of equal size. As for the buttons inside. Make the background yellow. Delete the default border. Font family. Poppins. And font weight. 500. To make a difference for these two buttons, the close button will give the background color white. List cart is where the list of products in the shopping cart is stored. Use overflow. Auto so that in case there are too many products in the cart, the design will not break. Instead it will appear a scroll bar. And specify that the scroll bar has size 0. However, default. I want this cart window to be pushed off the screen, moved 400 pixels to the right. When it is displayed, the motion effect will be 0.5 seconds. Conditions for it to display again on the screen. That's when the body has a class named active tab cart. Then I will set right. 0 so it appears right at this position again. At the same time, when the cart tab is pushed onto the screen, I will deliberately use transform. Translate text to push the entire content of the container 250 pixels to the left. This creates a more impressive effect. So that's the principle to open and close the shopping cart window. Now let's use a short JavaScript code to execute it. I want when the user clicks on the shopping cart icon, the shopping cart window will open, and click on the close button to close it. All processing related to the shopping cart function will be performed in the cart.js file. First, I recall the HTML elements I need to work with. The cart icon, close button, and body element. When the user clicks on the icon cart or close button, they all run the same function. Points to body. Add the active tab cart class to the body if it doesn't exist to open the tab and will delete the active tab cart class if the body already exists to close the tab. And it worked. Instead of trying to check if the active tab cart class already exists to choose whether to add or delete it. We just need to use the toggle function and it will check for us. And this is also the entire content for the template used for the website. Now, we will proceed to create the home page, where the list of products is displayed. For each specific page, we will have two files. If it is an index page, it will be an HTML index and a JS index. I will embed the CSS and index.js file here. Please note that I have embedded the JS link in a module type. Note that I won't need to embed cart.js here. On any given page, both will include two elements with ID. The app ID is used to embed the template file content. ID temporary content is used to contain the main content of this page. Why did I name it temporary content? Because this is only a temporary storage location, after the page is loaded. The content in this element will be moved to the center of the template layout. Here, I create a list product class to display the product list. Coming to JavaScript. 
First, I need to recall the two important IDs declared in the HTML to be able to work with it. The app ID is the element that I will use to contain the template file content. ID temporary content is where the content of this page is stored. Next, I proceed to load the content of the template file that I created at the beginning of the video. The content inside the fetch function is the path containing the template file. Convert to text format. With HTML being the content of the template file we have obtained. I will embed the content of that template file into the element with the id app. And it worked. The template file content has been displayed on the index page. However, if you get to this step, your code won't work. Press the F12 button on the keyboard. A programming window will appear. Click the console tab. If it shows an error related to core's policy. The reason is because you are running your project using the disk drive in your computer. The fetch function will not accept paths like this. A valid path is one that has specific domain names or IP addresses. There are many ways we can create virtual addresses on personal computers to work. The simplest and fastest way I would like to suggest is to use the Visual Studio Code application to write code. In this software, go to the extension section. Find the extension, Live Server. Proceed to install it. After installing Song, at the HTML index file, click the Go Live button. It will create an IP address for us to be able to run the website. After being able to run the project with the live server, let's continue with the JS work. Content tab is the ID located in the center of the template file. I will push the data on the current page to the center of that template. Then the content in temporary content will be deleted. So we have finished embedding the template file into another page. However, when I clicked on the shopping cart icon, the shopping cart window did not appear. That's because I haven't embedded the cart.js file content. To be able to do this, first in cart.js, I wrap its entire contents into a variable called cart and export default it. Now, anywhere, when I want to embed cart.js content, I just need to import cart with from as the path containing the cart.js file. The content of the cart.js file will start working after the template file is embedded. And it worked. I then proceed to run an init app function. If the cart function is used to perform functions related to the shopping cart, the init app function will be used to perform functions related to the current page. And the function of this page is to display product lists. To do that, we need to have data about the product. So I will proceed to create a products.js file to contain product data. Create an array of the same name and export it by default. This array will include many objects. Each object will correspond to a product. Some information related to the product such as, ID, name, price, description, image, its content is the link containing the image of the corresponding product. Likewise, I will create more products. Replace name, price and image information for differences. Note that, when you create products with the same information, it will still work. Except in the case of the ID field. You are not allowed to duplicate this field. After doing this project, you can also rely on this to create more information fields to enrich your project if you want. After having data, at index.js, I get product data by importing it and from as the path containing the product.js file. And these are the 8 products that I added in the data. So now, I proceed to add products to the screen. The product ID list is where I want to push the data. First, I delete all the content of this element on the screen. Then perform a loop to get all the data out. For each product in data, I create a new element. Give it a class named item. And add this element to list product. The content inside this element will include. An image, with the path written in the image field. Product's name. Unit price. And finally there is a button to add products to the cart. After pushing the data to the HTML file, then I will go to the style CSS file to design it. With product images, width 90%, use drop shadow to create a shadow effect behind. In list product, use display grid to divide columns. The products inside will be divided into four equal columns. Each column is 20 pixels apart. Give the item a creamy yellow background color. Padding 20 pixels. Border radius. 20 pixels. H2 is the title tag. Thickness 500. Large size. 
with class price, letter spacing to create space for numbers, small size. Finally, there is the add cart button. Dark background color, white text. Delete the default border. Padding. 5 pixels 10 pixels. Margin top. 10 pixels. Border radius. 20 pixels. Our next job is to handle when the user clicks on the add cart button. Then this product will have to be updated to our shopping cart. There are many add cart buttons on the screen. How can we distinguish which button was just clicked? So at that button. Please pass in a dataset id that is the product id that was clicked. So now, each button has its own ID data. And remember that, all processing events related to the shopping cart, all must be written in the cart.js file. Before continuing to code, let's look again at our data. We have a products table used to store product information. Includes all information. So we also need to create a data table to contain information about the shopping cart. The first field is product underscore id. It is the ID of the product added to the cart. And the second field is quantity. Used to store the quantity of that product in the shopping cart. Many of you will think that we will need to save additional information about the name and price of the product here. But in reality there is no need. Because that information is already available in the products table. When we want to get it from the cart table. Just rely on product underscore id to find a product with an id equal to that product underscore id. So at cart.js. First I call back the products table. I create an array cart to contain the list of products in the shopping cart. Default is empty. When the system listens for mouse click events. I will proceed to run a function. With event target being the element that was clicked on. Product id is the id value in the transmitted dataset. The default quantity is null. Position is the position of this product in the shopping cart. If in case this product already exists in the cart, then the value of position will be greater than or equal to zero. In case this product is not in the cart, then the initial value will be zero. Opposite. We will get the quantity of this product from the calculated position. If the button the user just clicked has a class named add cart, I will add one to quantity. Then send this information to the set product in cart function to perform processing in the cart. If the number passed is greater than zero, there will be two cases. One means that product does not exist in the shopping cart. That means position is less than zero. Then we just need to create a new row representing a product in the shopping cart including two fields passed in, product ID and quantity. In the second case, this product already exists in the shopping cart. Then we just need to change the quantity of that product in the shopping cart with the new quantity. After processing the data, we need to run one more function. This function will have the function of displaying data in the shopping cart on the screen. We will recall the HTML elements we need to work with. The first is the list cart class, which will display the list. The second is total HTML, which displays the number of products in the cart. The default quantity is always zero. When listing each product in the cart, this quantity will be added to the quantities of each product in the cart. Then, paste this new amount into the total HTML. It worked. Before adding data to list HTML, I will delete all the old content. Later, for each product in the shopping cart, I create a new element. And embed it in list HTML. It has a class named item. The content inside it will include the following. An image, product name, total price, and quantity. The quantity column will include three span tags. Middle tag to display value. The two outer cards are used to increase or decrease the quantity. It is already displayed, but this is just hard code. Remember, the cart table only contains information about product ID and quantity. The remaining information is in the product table. So here, we will find the location of the corresponding product in the products table through product underscore id. After getting the information, then we proceed to embed the data into HTML. The total amount is equal to the unit price multiplied by the quantity. So it's been working fine. Before further handling related issues, I will edit the CSS for this shopping cart interface. Product image. Width. 100%. With each item in the shopping cart. Use display. Grid to divide columns. 
I will divide it into four columns of different sizes. The spacing of each column is 10 pixels. Align item. Center to center horizontally. Text align. Center to center the text. The quantity class uses flex to ensure the three span tags are always in the same row. Each span tag has a width and height of 25 pixels. White background. Black letters. Border radius. 50% and cursor pointer to create a hand-shaped mouse effect when hovering over it. Particularly for the second span tag, there will be a transparent background color and white text. If the shopping cart has many products, products in the even position will have a slightly different background color to create emphasis. And that's our design part. After being able to add products to the cart, I want when the user clicks on the plus or minus button, the quantity in the cart can change accordingly. Remember that when you want to let the system know which product you want to control, please pass in the dataset with the corresponding product id. And now, when the user clicks on it, the system will automatically run to this function. In this function we continue to check the condition. If the button the user just pressed is class plus, we just add one to quantity and send this data to the set product in cart function. I see that the way to handle plus and add cart is the same. So I only need to write them once. This time, if the button click is add cart or plus, the quantity will add up to 1. Let's try to check whether the plus button is working or not. First I add the product to the cart. Then press plus. And it worked. Next will be the event when the user clicks the minus button. Contrast with plus. When the user presses minus, I will subtract 1 from quantity and send this data through the function set product in cart. Let's test it out now. It's already working. Quantity has decreased. But until the quantity equals 1, then it won't be halved. So here, in case the quantity is less than or equal to 0, I will remove this product from the cart. And that's it. Please check if it is working properly. First I will add a few products to the cart. The current quantity is 1. If you click minus, that product will be removed from the cart. So it worked. However, with shopping cart functionality, it will be required that shopping cart data be retained even when the user turns off the computer or closes the browser. So in function set product in cart, where cart data is processed, I save shopping cart information to my computer with local storage. When a user visits the website, I run an init app function. In init app, I check if shopping cart data exists in the client. If so, I will give the value of the cart using that data. Then, run the refresh cart HTML function to display it on the screen. It's as simple as that. Now I will try adding the product to the cart. Then refresh the page to see if it still has data. And it's still here. Even if you turn off the device and then turn it back on, the data will still be there. These are also the final pieces of code in the cart.js file. We have done all the hardest things. Now, I will show everyone how simple and fast it is to create other pages. On the home page, when a user wants to access a detail page, I will create an HTML detail link with an ID variable that is the ID of the product I want to see details about. So it went to another page, with an ID value attached. Now, I proceed to create a detail HTML and detail JS file. Embed module style CSS and detail JS links here. On the home page we have an app element used to embed the template. And a temporary content to write the page content. The same goes for all other pages. I will continue to write content for it. The detail class will contain information about the product. The information below is just hard code, when working with JavaScript. We will put the actual data for it later. List product will be the place to display similar products. After writing the hard content, I went through CSS to design it. To default. The detail section will be divided into two columns. The left column contains images and the right column contains content. The distance between the two columns is 50 pixels. Align text to the left. Image size is 100%. In class image, fill use position relative. At this point, I create one more virtual element before. Use position. Absolute to align the position according to the parent class. Has width and height of 300 pixels. For a before element to work, it needs to declare the content attribute. Background color. Z index. Minus 1 so that the element is behind the image. 
Border radius I will give 4 random values. Center it with left 50% minus 150 pixels. 50% from the top margin of the image class. Coming to the content, the name will be very large. Padding top 40 pixels. And margin bottom, 10 pixels. With price, font weight, bold, font size, extra large. Letter spacing, 7 pixels. Margin bottom, 20 pixels. With buttons, white background color. Delete the border. Padding 15 pixels and 20 pixels. Border radius, 20 pixels. Poppins font and large font size. The SVG icon will have width, 15 pixels. Especially for the second button. The background color changes to black. White letters. Use display. Inline flex to position child elements. The distance between two elements is 20 pixels. Use box shadow to create a shadow effect. With SVG. Use translate Y to move it down to equal the text position. Now, we will use JavaScript to turn this hard information into dynamic data corresponding to each product. First, I will embed the products and cart data here. The first job is to embed the HTML template into each page. We have done this before on the home page. Now we just need to copy that code and paste it here. init app will be the function used to display product details on this page please note that corresponding to each detailed page we pass here a product id so first of all i'm going to get the value of that id using url search params once i have this id i just need to find its information from the product table provided that any product has an id that matches the product id of this page so it has already retrieved the necessary data. However, what if the past it is a number and there is no corresponding product? Then if this happens, I will redirect the user back to the home page. And it worked. Now I proceed to embed this content in HTML. Detail is the parent class that contains the contents of the HTML file. I call the child elements inside again to replace the content. First, change the image address to the image address in the found data. Similar to name, price, description. When the user clicks this button, to be able to add this product to the cart is very simple. It already has a class named add cart. Now we just need to pass in a dataset ID corresponding to this product, so that the system can determine which product we want to add to the cart. Then everything will immediately work. The next thing is the display of similar products. Is it on the home page? We have coded a piece of JS used to display the product list. Then we just need to copy that code. Paste it here. And it will work immediately. Because currently we are putting the same product content inside the detail class. The detail class has the rule of dividing it into two columns. So I'll move this similar product out of the scope of the detail class so it doesn't divide the column anymore. Beyond that, we're left with a problem. It's in the list of similar products. There exists a product like the detail product. This is not necessary. So at the time of listing similar products out, I add one condition. Only take products with an ID different from the ID of this detailed product. And it worked well. Our last easy job. It's about checking whether this design works well on devices other than computers. First is the iPad. On the home page, I see it's fine. However, I will edit the list product class to divide the list into three columns instead of four as currently. Also on the details page, I think everything is still very good. The list of similar products has also been divided into three columns. So now we come to the mobile screen. On the home page, I will divide it into two columns instead of three to make it easier to see. Go to the details page. Everything was almost completely damaged. The content in detail will not be divided into two half columns. Text align. Center to align text to the center. Initially images are calculated by width. But now I will calculate by height. The height of the image will be 40% of the device screen height. 
Reduce the size of the product name and the size of the two buttons. So it's done. Our designs on mobile and iPad have been edited to be as beautiful and user-friendly as possible. And that's the whole point of this video. If anyone has any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment and I will answer. If it looks good, don't forget to like to support us and subscribe to the channel to watch more videos. Thank you everyone. See you again in the next video.